Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley. In today's demonstration, we're going to be looking at blackbody light. To do that, we're going to be using the Blackbody Curves and Filters Explorer from Nap Labs. Let's get started. I've got my Nap Labs window open. I'll come down here to Blackbody Curves, and then I'm going to choose Blackbody Curves and Filter Explorer. And that pulls up a window that looks like this one. It shows the emission curve for a black body with a temperature currently of 6,000 degrees Kelvin, but I can change that. And then, as you'll see in a minute, I can also add additional curves if I want to. This simulator is going to let us see the two important features of black body light that are described by Wien's Law and Stefan's Law. So first, let's just start messing around with the temperature. Let's say I'm going to decrease the temperature of my black body. You'll see that as I do that, the peak of this black body curve is going to start moving towards the right, towards longer wavelength. You'll notice the x-axis down here in this graph, that's wavelength. So long wavelength on the right, short wavelength on the left. And as I reduce the temperature, the peak of that curve moves towards long wavelength. And of course, if I reverse the process and increase the temperature, then the peak of the curve starts to move towards short wavelength. Okay, let's go back to that initial setting again. Uh, in fact, let's make that 8,000 for reasons you'll see in a minute. And I'm going to lock the vertical scale. When I was messing around with peak wavelength earlier, you may have noticed that the vertical scale on the y-axis was doing something really weird. And the reason for that is because of Stefan's law. So as I increase the temperature of a black body from, say, 6,000, which was my initial setting, you'll notice that the height of the curve is getting bigger. Stefan's law tells us that as I increase the temperature of a black body, it's going to give off more light. Its luminosity is going to go up. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, is that as I increase the temperature, the overall height of this curve is getting much bigger. And as I decrease the temperature, it of course gets considerably smaller. So if I want to, let's set that back to auto scale, and then set this to 6,000. Okay, so that's my baseline. That's about the temperature of the sun. Let's bring in a couple more curves of different temperatures. So I'm going to auto scale to this particular curve, the one for the sun. And then I'm going to add one for a much cooler star, say with a temperature of about 4,000 degrees. You'll see that the sun has a peak that's further to the left, so at shorter wavelength than the cooler star, and it's giving off a lot more light. I can add another curve, a star much hotter than the sun, say 10,000 degrees. Go back to my sun scale. So we see our cool star over there, then the sun, and then there's the hot star way over there. It's completely off scale. Can't even see it. So I zoom in on that a little bit more and you'll see, okay, the wavelength has shifted again. It's now even shorter than it was before. Here it's at 483 nanometers. Now it's at about three or 290. As you can imagine, based on the way I'm discussing this, black bodies are going to play a major role when we start studying stars towards the end of the course. And our understanding of black body light is going to be really important to help us understand the luminosity and color of stars of different temperatures and different masses. So keep this in the back of your head as we move through the course because it's going to come back. But for now, bring up this simulator, play around with black bodies. Think about the apparent color 
that you would see for black bodies of different temperatures. Would, say, the hot black body, the one that we're focused on right now, would it have a bluer color or a redder color than the sun? Think these issues through, play around a little bit with the simulators, try and come up with answers, have fun while you do it, and I'll talk to you in class.